table, I look around this room. Can you hear me in the back? Maybe I, okay. <clears throat> and I, I realize it's a great testimony to the achievement of two dear people, Tom and Corwin. Uh, as a former member of the Division of General Internal Medicine, it gives me great pleasure, and it probably gives Barry some pleasure too, to recognize that both of these individuals are members of the Division of General Internal Medicine. Um, it's a great privilege for me to talk about Tom. We shared offices and shared patients and challenges and problems for more than 25 years. And so it'll be fun for me to give you some personal insights into a rather private man. Uh, I too recognize how important this award is. Being a master in the college is one of the most important recognitions given by the American College of Physicians. And I have great respect for this organization and I talked to Molly a little bit about my involvement and over the years. Well, some of you may have seen Tom sitting in a wheelchair. <clears throat> That's not typical for Tom. <laughs> Three or four weeks ago, he fell and broke his hip. And I just, I'm so grateful he's here. It would have been rather shallow for me to stand up here tonight and talk about him while he was in a rehab facility. So thank you to Bill and the family. Most of the individuals at this table are members of his family. And I feel like I know them well over the years. Thank you for being here. I went in to see Tom just a few days after he fell and asked him how he was. And I did just tell by an expression on his face that he was in some pain. Uh, and immediately, and this won't surprise any of you, he changed the focus of my question to, how are you, John? Tell me about Judy. How are the children? It was so typical that he is focused on those around him. He genuinely knows my children. He knows my wife. And those were not superfluous questions. He really wanted to know. But I pursued. And, and I asked him, Tom, as you look back about your career, what is it that has really meant the most to you? He said, the long-term interaction with my patients and my peers didn't surprise me because that's where he put his effort and his love. I said, Tom, what does it mean to you to be the recipient of mastership in the college? He said, it means a lot to me because it shows my peers care about what I tried to do. And I'm glad Dr. Pendleton proposed me for this recognition. He, he cited you, Bob. And his recollection. So I want to talk briefly about three areas of Tom's career and his life and who he is as a person. Uh, the first is his role as the chief of the Division of General Internal Medicine. That was back in 1971-72. That's a long time ago. George Cartwright made him the first chief and when George hired me, he said, and he hired Grant Christian, he said, you and Grant are going to join, join Tom in the first division of general internal medicine. And uh, that was a new thing. There were not too many divisions of general internal medicine. And it was new terrain. And so those of you, um, you can think about some of the issues that might be involved. At that time, there was one track, the traditional track. We were hired to be teachers and clinicians. But when the rubber met the road, you didn't get promoted by being a teacher and a clinician. It didn't take me very long to figure that out. <laughs> uh, and yet, through all of this, Tom was able to recruit wonderfully talented people. Richard Garibaldi, uh, some of you will remember him, went on to be chair of the Department of Medicine at the University at UConn. Um, Barry Stoltz, the current chairman of the Division of General Internal Medicine. Willard Deere, I saw Willard here. A distinguished, are you there Willard, where are you? 
career with Amgen, and he's back with us. Uh, there, there's a long list of people that Tom was able to recruit to our division, and he supported them, and he created an, an environment where they were able to flourish. And it made him happy that other people were flourishing. That is one of Tom's real secrets, that he genuinely took satisfaction in the growth and development of those in his division. Um, one of, as I went online to look at what are the requirements for mastership, and the very first attribute that's mentioned in bold print is integrity. Wow. Does that describe Tom King? In, in a world where politics and departments can be rather difficult at times, Tom was a man of integrity. There was never a hidden agenda. You knew what Tom was trying to do, and he always tried to fulfill his commitment to people the, the best he could. In the face of all of these demands that were being placed upon him, he maintained his modesty, his humor, his genuineness, his creativity in how to deal with problems. The second thing that I'd like to talk about is his role as a physician. Um, Tom, and Chuck talked about this a little bit, had the rather old-fashioned and still very important view that I share that being a doctor is both an opportunity and an obligation. I think he kind of looked upon it as a calling. And um, that just shaped a lot of the way he looked at the world and the way he dealt with people. He understood that when you shut the door in the examining room and people open up their hearts to you and, and tell you things they may not tell anybody else, that that's a sacred place. And Tom understood that. He understood the human dimension of medicine um, as well as anyone I've ever known. And, and I just greatly appreciated that. Countless students and house staff and peers have watched Tom exemplify this old maxim. And you've heard it. That the, the secret of caring for the patient is caring for the patient. As pedestrian as that may sound, it's a lot harder to do, actually, than just to repeat the maxim. And Tom really did that. And I, I, just, I just really appreciate that. Tom had an experience in 1987 where he was very sick. I don't know how many of you remember this, but he presented at University Hospital with a kidney stone, sepsis, and was diagnosed with hairy cell leukemia. And he, here he is all these years later, and was working full time up until recently, blessing the lives of many people. But through that, he learned, he already knew it, but he learned more about empathy, I think. <laughs> How when you're really sick, little things make a difference. Just little things. And, and Tom, let, let me tell you about a few of these little things that I observed working with him over the years. Look in the Salt Lake phone book and you'll find his phone number listed. How many physicians do you know still have their phone book listed, their number listed? And it's, it's accurate. <laughs> Tom, Tom made house calls. That's unusual for any physician, let alone an academic physician. How many patients were accompanied by their referring to physician to a consultation where he'd sit in with the patient? to make sure the transition went smoothly. Tom did that. John Zone told me quite a few instances where this occurred. How many of us asked Tom to be our doctor? <laughs> and some others here too. Uh, that is, I think, an ultimate compliment, that we had enough trust and confidence in him that he, we wanted him to be our doctor. 
Tom took care of the Spence Eccles, but he also took care of prisoners, and he took care of nursing home residents, and he treated them the same. I worked with him. There, he, he just is this wonderful human being that was able to love and care for people irrespective of their position. In the early days of our division, there were no full-time ER doctors, there were no full-time uh, intensive care doctors, and we were on call every third night, Grant and Tom and I, and when there were unidentified patients coming through the ER, they went to our division usually. And because there were no faculty there, we would go in and see them in the middle of the night, regularly, those new patients that came in. So Tom, it wasn't just a prestigious chief of the Division of General Medicine, he was up in the middle of the night a lot and took care of his patients. Tom was the patient's advocate. He was a master in taking care of patients with multiple interacting problems. I don't know anybody that did it better. And he understood the psychological dimension, the social dimension. He did that so well. Um, my final comments, um, oh, I, I mentioned to him, thanks, Tom, for letting me ask you about EKGs. I, I always like to read my EKGs, and Tom has special training in cardiology, and I said, what do you think of this? And he'd help me find my way through it. The final thing I want to talk about is his role in three areas. It's, it's his role as a human being, but he really taught those who worked around him how we should relate to each other. And so I'm going to talk about his role as a teacher, a colleague, and as a, an ambassador to the community. There is no one that was able to represent this institution to the community like Tom Kane. I think he's irreplaceable. I don't see anybody coming down the track to do that. But let me just talk a minute about his role as a teacher and a colleague and as an ambassador. He taught, he taught all of us, students, trainees, peers, that if you take time with people and you, you're concerned about them and you show respect and you have integrity and as Will Dare said in one of his descriptions of Tom, if you have equanimity through all of this, then people are nice to each other. And Tom was just simply nice to people. But not only that, he was very skilled. And so these strengths were recognized. So he would represent our division in the department meetings. And those meetings with division chiefs can be contentious. I mean, and, and, but Tom was a division chief with, with dignity. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> he represented the department to the School of Medicine. He recently received a very wonderful award from the School of Medicine. He represented the School of Medicine to the university. He's been recognized by the university, the overall university, for his achievements. And he rec he's represented the university to the community. Um, so. I, I just want to, and you know, there have been many families that have wanted to show their appreciation about Tom. Um, the Perry family, the Winder family, the Eccles family. There were a couple of others uh, that I could try to remember, but um, what, what came out of that? Well, three professorships, one, uh, no, three chairs, two two lectureships and one professorship. So those are all funding that will remain here as a lasting legacy for Tom at the university. In conclusion, this modest, wonderful friend is just uh, the quintessential example of what a master in the college should be. We congratulate you and want to say thank you.
but two fantastic tributes to two just amazing uh, human beings and, and physicians. So, so what a wonderful night. Um, I can think of no sort of better way to, to sort of put a capstone on, on tonight